So welcome back to the Friday vlog series where today uh, my dog Rossi, he's gonna annoy the shit out of us right? because there's a thunderstorm going on as much as I love him when it comes to thunderstorms. Whoa! He don't like it and if I leave him out there I'm the only person home he's gonna bang on the door. So he's just gonna chill out with us today and I should say this video is brought to you by Squarespace. Thank you very much for supporting my work and look I can appreciate it's been a while between Friday vlogs That'll be part two of this video, what's been going on behind the scenes. But part number one, as many of you who followed the channel will know, and you know this too, Roscoe, in 2021, we built up a Windspace T1500 with hypercarbon wheels and a Factor O2 van with Caden Decadence carbon wheels. And as a result, I've been getting a ton of requests on the channel to review and do speed tests on the Windspace Hypers versus the Caden wheels. And because I listen to you magnificent people out there, guys and girls, I wanted to bring that idea to life, but there is one big problem with how it stands today. We have a 50 millimeter disc brake clincher on the wind space versus a 38 millimeter rim brake, my personal favorite tubular wheel on the factor. Woo! Oh -ho! So if I compared these wheels behind me in a review, speed tests, etc., I'd just simply get trolled to death. Too right, mate, I would tear you apart. And I'm learning as this channel grows, I'm getting some good haters, aren't I, Roscoe? So to keep the haters at bay. Firstly, for those of you who do enjoy my content, if you could give this video a like, that would be greatly appreciated. And number two, what I have done is I've reached out to Ben at Caden Wheels, who is the founder and owner, and he sent me a pair of comparable wheels for a few weeks. Can't catch wheels, so we can do this test properly. So a big thank you to Ben and the good folks at ICANN Cycling who have been contacting me for many months about reviewing their wheels. So I thought as a cheaper alternative for this little project, why don't we throw these into the mix as well. So let's get into part one of this video. <laughs> so thankfully before this part of the video, my wife just got home. So Rossi is now pestering her, although the thunderstorms calmed down now. Please know this is not a review today. I'm doing an unboxing. We're gonna be weighing the wheels and I'll give you my high level overview of the wheels and the companies and the price points. And then we will do a review on a low wind day, which is proving to be quite difficult at the moment due to the spring winds and there has been a ton of rainfall. So once I can identify a clear day with low winds, then I can do the speed test and I'll be able to bring you the review. So give me two to three weeks. Now, we'll do the unboxing first. If you like unboxings, keep in mind, I've already unboxed the Windspace Hypers. Link to that video below if you wanna check it out. Let's get into it. I can redo that. Nice solid box. Press so far, it is thin though. It's a thin, it's a thin noodle. Oh, little t-shirt. Go anywhere, I believe I can, I like what they've done there. I got one, I can turn this dickhead off. Now that's better. I know what these are gonna be. Got one of these old mates at the bottom too. Bit of foam there, go faster. Little spacer there as well. I can front. Smaller box, more girth, inconspicuous from Caden. And well packaged. So Ben, while he hasn't given me the wheels, I'm just borrowing them, he has gifted me with floating disc brake rotors for centre lock. Now I am a rim brake fan, but I will accept these because we're being coerced into disc at the moment and I've got to ride disc brake bike, so we'll talk about those in a second. So the rear Caden, these are 45s. Hub check. Out of the gate, that feels very, very smooth. And the front, see the logo there. Personally, I never found unboxings that interesting, but apparently a lot of people like them, so that's why I'm bringing them to you now. Let's move to the weigh-in. Keep in mind, I have previously weighed the Hypers as a couple, which came in at 1,475 grams. Here's that Thunder Rossi. I can front, 655. I can rear, 795. Caden, Front, 640. Decadence, rear, 725. Now it should be noted that the Decadence does come in a 50 millimeter profile clincher, but that wasn't available for review. So we got a very close 
second best. Now, before we talk about the wheels at a high level, I just wanted to thank today's video sponsor, being Squarespace. If we actually have a look at my wife's website here, which was built just recently, it's on a Squarespace platform and you can see how clean, simple, yet intuitive it is. And my wife, who's a non-techie, personally loves how easy it is to go into the back end, alter text, layouts, color schemes, etc., without needing any development skills. If you're keen to get a website off the ground, go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com backslash camnichols to save 10%. See all the relevant details below in the video description area. So here's the deal. We have the Winspace Hypers carbon 50 millimeter disc brake clincher tubeless ready wheels valued at $1,200 USD. We have the Caden Decadence carbon 45 millimeter disc brake tubeless able clincher wheels valued at 1,443 USD. And we have the ICANN Aero 50 millimeter disc brake tubeless ready clincher wheels coming in at, get this, $675 USD, about half the price of the others. And look, obviously these wheels have different hubs, bearings, carbon layouts, which we'll examine in more detail in the review, but out of the gate, the Hypers look completely different. These two look quite similar, the Icans and the Decadence wheels. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that they're both running the same spokes. They use a spoke called SAPM. I think that's how you say it, or SAPM, CX-Ray spokes. But if you get up close and personal with the spokes, you will actually notice quite a significant difference. For example, with the Icans, they're running a two to two ratio. So they've got 24 spokes all up, 12 on this side and 12 on that side. Whereas the Cadence or the Decadence and the Hypers and some of the best wheel manufacturers run this engineering practice in their wheels, including Campy and Fulcrum, two of my favorite wheel makers in the world. And I believe Rovell and Shimano in the last four to five years changed the, to the two to one ratio. So you'll see here, we've got 21 spokes as opposed to 24 and we've got 14 on this side, and we've got seven on this side. And the reason why they do this, apparently it creates a better tension profile in the rim, a stiffer rim because of the bracing angle. There's less bracing angle on this side to accommodate the hub and the drive train. So that's the reason for doing it. So there's a different technology just in the spokes alone, the way they are lined into the rim. And also if we talk about the rim itself, no doubt there will be some big differences internally. For example, I know Caden run what they call nipple patching, which essentially means that in between the nipples, there is less carbon fiber here to optimize weight saving. And around the nipple area, they put more carbon fiber to strengthen the spoke rim relationship. Now, for these tests. We'll be using the Asioma power pedal. So we've got the same power transfer for all tests. We'll be using the Winspace T1500. We'll be using these floating disc rotors that I showed you in the unboxing from Caden. I asked Ben, I said, people are gonna know where they can buy these. And he said, well, they're not for sale at the moment. Well, I said, well, I can't show them and not say anything. So if you're interested in finding out more about these floating rotors, you can contact Caden directly, he said that specifically. And we'll be running the same inner tubes and these GP 5,000 25 millimeter tires, Continentals, a competitor to Schwalb. And we'll run these tests both uphill, Gindia Drive, we'll run them downhill and we'll do them on the flats. And of course, if you've got any ideas or suggestions for this upcoming review, love to hear your thoughts below and let's get into part two of this video. So what's been going on behind the scenes? Well, my wife and dog Roscoe right here, they've been taking over my office a lot recently. Who's taking over my office? <laughs> get off my back. <laughs> but four things. Number one, the seeker been getting a lot of questions about what's going on with this build. In fact, I reckon more questions about this one than the wind space, which is quite interesting. I'm just waiting on a group set. Once I can get my hands on a group set, SRAM one buy is what I'm looking for. Once I can get that sorted, Jay Taylor at Taylor Cycles, he's confirmed that he's gonna be building 
the bike. So it's just gonna come down to when I can get my hands on a group set, hopefully within the next month. What else has been going on behind the scenes? Well, it's we're just peeling off school holidays and we went camping on the GC, the Gold Coast, in fact, Cool and Gatta. My wife can tell you. Alice, why did we go to Cool and Gatta? I hoped that there would be a bubble so that we could see my sister and her family there. They live just south of the border. In Ballina. Where's that spot we went though? That was really lovely with the kids. Oh, uh, Springbrook. Yeah, we went to Springbrook, which was an amazing little place with waterfalls. And if you're ever in the GC, little family adventure, highly recommend Springbrook. Springbrook? 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 Springbrook. Springbrook. Uh, the kids also had an epic race on those little, uh, what are they, pedal bikes or no, pedal cars. <gasps> Quick, go, go, <laughs> almost in the bin. <laughs> oh, Ruby's driving you off the side of the road. It's going to be a close call. Oh, Holly wins. We also had the Noosa Classic here on the weekend, which is uh, the big ride in my local town being Noosa. It's, uh, you can do, I think, you can do 120, 160. I think the other one might be a 70 or something like that. Um, but it's an awesome ride. We had a great day. I think it was about 25, 26 degrees. It did get quite hot towards the end. A lot of people ask me why I didn't I film it this year because I did a piece on it in 2019. Unfortunately, it got cancelled last year because of COVID. Uh, but the reason why I didn't do a piece on it is because when you take camera equipment and you're filming stuff, you don't really get to enjoy the day so much. So this year I just wanted to go and ride it, which is what I did. Gave it a bit of a nudge. Uh, there's a picture of me with a can of Coke in my back pocket, which I thought was a great idea until I got to the top of the hill and descended. Rough rose, a lot of vibration. Went to open that can of Coke on the way home and it just sprayed everywhere. So that was a lesson learned, but really good day out. If you're ever in Noosa, make sure you check that out. I'll link to their um, website below and Last of all, I've uh, been super busy with the final intake for the Road Cycling Academy. It's happening in November, which is pretty cool, um, before we back into Christmas, which is kind of unbelievable. We're almost there. So that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching the vid, and I'll catch you in the next one.